Okay, so uh, for now, the uh, OHSU. Um, OHSU has uh, about a billion dollars of unrestricted cash on the balance sheet, along with uh, about a billion of restricted cash. So one of the ideas is uh, either sweeping or taxing uh, the unrestricted cash uh, from OHSU. The, and, and again, we've got to meet uh, some more so I can understand uh, the impact uh, that this has on the institution. But one of the ideas that was presented was, you know, if the state were able to provide some sort of a backstop. So in other words, if, if some of the about billion dollars of unrestricted cash were swept, could the state provide some sort of a backstop um, when and if OHSU needed access to that liquidity in the future uh, or to protect their bond, their current bond rating? Um, I want to study that a little bit more. The uh, Port of Portland, uh, one of the things we talked about was the pension system at the Port of Portland versus OHSU. So OHSU offers uh, to their employees both the Oregon uh, pension uh, plan and they have a private plan. Being a public corporation, they, they have the opportunity to offer uh, uh, something different than the Oregon pension. And it's interesting, and I need to learn more about this, and I'll, I'll do that this week. But uh, my understanding at OHSU is the alternative plan, uh, which some 99% of new employees sign up for, uh, OHSU is able to uh, offer the 6% employer employee portion uh, payment, uh, whereas they don't do the 6% uh, em employee portion for those that choose the Oregon pension plan. And the alternative plan saves them what I understand to be quite a bit of money. So when I met with the Port of Portland, I asked them about their pension plan. And they don't offer, and they, like OHSU, as I understand it at this point, are a public corporation, public entity, public corporation. Uh, so they seemingly have an opportunity to offer other pension plans to their employees. And at this point in time, they've chosen not to do that for various reasons, right or wrong. Um, and again, I don't know what the savings is uh, to OHSU, the difference between the two plans. Um, but it, it, it could be a reasonable amount of savings for the Port of Portland to offer a similar alternative plan to the pension plan that they, they currently offer. Um, and we'll study more about the, the real estate assets. Um, uh, there, another thing that's gotten in the way that will be resolved in the next couple of weeks is um, uh, calendars have been really difficult over the last couple of weeks, um, and but we're we're getting through that. Other things that we're looking at uh, at the Port of Portland uh, as uh, significant as as this sounds is privatization of the airport uh, globally. Um, it is a common practice for large interna international airports uh, to be owned uh, privately or to be managed privately. Um, it's not common for that to, to happen here in the United States, but it's something that we're exploring. Uh, and the next time we meet, I'll have some more information about that. We're also trying to understand the, uh, the reserve cash that the Port of Portland has um, to see if there's an opportunity to tax or sweep that. And then the last thing, Don, thanks to your feedback, we'll look at uh, parking. Is there an opportunity with these institutions and others? For example, the city of Chicago, we think we talked about that last time, was selling off parking and, and uh, uh, anyway. Yeah, paying more money for it. Chicago did. <laughs> so those are the things that uh, I'd share in the open forum today. I hope to share more in the executive session.